Today, I want to talk to you about my most used shortcuts for illustrating and surface pattern design in Adobe Illustrator. I love Adobe Illustrator because it is so versatile. If you don't use Adobe Illustrator, it's okay. You can still be an illustrator. You can still be a service pattern designer. I get this question all the time, but personally, I love it. And actually, when I first came out of working in-house, I had rotated between Adobe Photoshop and Adobe Illustrator pretty regularly because I was often working with other people's files. And so I use a little bit of both. And recently I was converting this document um, and adding some lettering, converting an old design that I had made basically, and then giving it some new color and some new lettering and a little bit of a new layout. And this was a document that was originally made in Photoshop. And I just wanted to share some of my favorite shortcuts, some existing and some that I've created that I use all the time and use this file as an example. So this was auto traced from a Photoshop document, um, this background, and this I drew out in Illustrator, um, the top outline. And as you can see, this shape has a lot of extra anchor points. And that brings me to my first favorite shortcut that already exists in Adobe Illustrator. Now, if you wanted to get rid of some of these anchor points, one very simple way you can do that is object, path, simplify. However, sometimes you want to be a little bit more careful and do it in certain sections. And in order to do that, you have to select your shape Click B, which brings up your brush, and then hold down Alt, and that will bring up this circle icon. And when you're holding, you're continuing to hold down Alt, you can sort of draw roughly along the sides of the path, and it will eliminate some of those extras and sort of smooth things out. So depending on how smooth you want to go, you can kind of continue to do this. Um, and that can be a really great way to adjust your line work. I use this all the time. A second shortcut that I use a lot, I'm gonna click B again for brush and I'm gonna hold down that Alt and smooth. And you see how this has just made this kind of rounded area. And I want to um, create a corner here because I want this to be a kind of a bump for the top of the butterfly body. So another shortcut that I use a lot is the anchor point tool. So under your pen tool, um, if you click here, you have an anchor point tool. And I believe the default shortcut is C. Now it's possible that I've changed this, okay? I can't even remember what the defaults are. So if you're looking at your pen tool and going down to the anchor point and it's not C, I'm going to show you how to change your shortcut so that it can be C, okay? Um, but I'm going to address that a little bit later. So I like to select my, uh, my, my shape, hit C, hit C, which brings up this little um, triangle. And when I click on a anchor point, it will turn it into a point rather than a smooth anchor point. So let me show you that again. Um, something like, let's see here, something like this shows it a little better. If I click C and I click this right here, you see how this is now an angle rather than a smooth situation. If you push it again and pull, you can, you know, curve it out again, but using this point to create, um, this shortcut to create angles has been super useful to me. So now I can kind of create this body. If I click the minus, I can get rid of some of these extra points and either smooth it or I can bring this here. There's lots of options here. So I use that anchor point tool a lot and where I use it 
often is for hand lettering. So these letters that you're seeing here, I hand lettered and I lettered them in Procreate and then I auto traced them. And then I went in and edited a little bit. Sometimes I smoothed and sometimes I did some other things. But as you can see, um, this line work here is still kind of rough. So if I wanted this to be a little bit cleaner and smoother, one thing I might do is again, select this, click my C for anchor point and make this an angle so I can drag this minus this, select this so that these can be a little bit more angular. So I do that a lot for hand lettering. So for example, here I have a point here, but then this is rounded. If I wanted this to be a point as well, I might do something like this, select this, and use this. So this is another one of my favorite shortcuts that I use a lot. I might add a point and then C and make it a corner, C for corner. All right, so if I wanted that to be a little bit less organic, um, I might make those changes. The third shortcut that I use a lot is now, the next thing I might do for this butterfly is this fits behind here, but I want to add some of the other colors. So I'm taking this, bringing it up, dragging it up to the top, this layer on top, just so I can show this to you, okay? Now I have this red selected. I'm gonna Control C for copy, and then Control F, paste the same thing directly on top. So why would I do that? First of all, let me just show you that now I have two things, it's pasted directly on top. So usually when we copy, we often do Control C, um, and if you have a Mac, of course, it's Command C, and then Control V, which will just sort of paste it nearby. But I often Control C and then Control F to paste it directly on front. And the reason that I do that is because then, I have something that's lining up exactly. I can select another color and then use my eraser tool. I just hit E to get rid of some of the other points here. So now I'm erasing here and then I'm taking this and this and deleting them and I'm starting to create, you know, what I what you see over here. Selecting this blue again. Just coming around. There we go, and there we go. So now I have this blue, then I would select the red again, Control C, Control F. Now I'm gonna select this yellow. I'm gonna erase here and erase here. And now I'm gonna select the whole yellow and delete it. Okay, so that is an easy way to fill in this butterfly. I see that I actually saved the yellow in the original. Um, but this is just to show you how I often color in shapes. It's by Control C and then Control F to paste in front. And just so you know, Control C and Control B will paste behind. So now I have this shape in two places. I'm gonna select orange. The back one should be orange. So yes, if I delete this blue and then or select the blue and erase, now I have orange underneath. All right, so Control F or Control B to paste front or back. So those are some of my favorite existing shortcuts. Next, I wanna show you some of my favorite shortcuts that I've created and then I've used all the time. So. Again, this anchor point one might be one that I created. I honestly can't remember. But if you want to create your own shortcuts, all you have to do is go to edit, keyboard shortcuts, and then you can go through and let's see here, anchor point C, if I wanted to change this to something different, um, let's just say R, you would click OK. I'm not gonna do that because I know C. Um, and then you can also do it for menu commands, okay? And so menu commands is any of these things here that you see above in the menu, you can um, 
create your own. And sometimes you might be overwriting something that you don't use a shortcut for. So I often do this. Maybe you use shortcuts that I don't use, but sometimes I'm putting in something and it's like, this is going to mean that you can't, I don't know, add some sort of gradient or something. And I don't use shortcuts for gradients. So I'm like, that's fine. So you have to make those choices. Um, but you can go in and change these things. And so now I'm going to show you, and then you say, okay, and that will save it. Um, you sure you want to save over this set? And I'm just going to say yes. Um, so my favorite shortcuts that I use that I've created. The first one is from path outline stroke. Control O. Now I think Control O is like open a new document, but I just don't do that because that's not a shortcut that I've used. So you might use a different letter if you do that a lot, but Control O for outline stroke. And I use this a lot because I'm often using brushes and these, as you can see, these brushes are slightly textured. And sometimes after I'm done drawing a shape, I want to do some changes to how things are looking. So I might take like, for example, right here, this is such a small thing that I probably wouldn't change. I wouldn't change it in, in a final document. But if this was a larger, like a, a very big shape, I can see that all three of these strokes are exactly the same. I use the same brush. So right here, we're having the same kind of ripple pattern that um, maybe I want to adjust that so it looks a little bit more organic. So I would select all of these, control O, which again is doing the same thing as object, path, outline stroke. Now these are all outline strokes that I can individually edit. So I can make this one a little bit more bumpy in that way. And this one, maybe I want to make more like this and give it a more organic look. Also remember, I could click B and hold down Alt and I could smooth it if I wanted to, which I specifically picked rough brushes, so that doesn't make sense. I wouldn't really do that, but that's something that I could do if it was too rough. Maybe the brush is too rough. Another time that this happens is when I have brushes that I want to make into a circle and sometimes the circle this is a connected circle but because of the way the brush is um it doesn't actually connect or sometimes it connects but one side is way thicker than the other so then i would just say Control o and i would fill this in because this doesn't actually touch i would use the blob brush which is shift b and fill that in a little bit so that it's the same shape. And then I would adjust so that this was still an organic circle, but it actually connected. All right, so outline stroke I use all the time. The other thing that I use very regularly is offset path, which is under object path offset path. I've made that control M offset path. And what offset path does is make any sort of path bigger or smaller. So imagine I had just made this circle and I want to use it with this butterfly pattern, but as you can see, it's, it's much, um, thicker line stroke than these, these strokes are. So if I hit control M right now, that's very large, but if I go negative 05, for example, that might be too big, 01, we can see that this has a smaller ring on the inside. So now I'm gonna do 02, and that made it a little bit too small. So I'm gonna do 015 and see what happens, okay? There we go, pull it out. And so that has made this a smaller, um, smaller size. If I use this, let's say I blow this up, I hit Control O and outline the strokes. 
And then afterwards, I decide I want it to be a little bit thicker. Control M, 0 0.02, and that makes it a little bit thicker. Okay, that's not really that neat. Um, sometimes you might just put an outline on a stroke to make it really kind of close, but making things smaller or making some sort of outline around it, like if I wanted to create this shape again for a different type of butterfly, I might take all of these things that are together, make it into one shape, offset, and then I would have a shape that I can select the insides for, delete these insides, and arrange, send to back, and now again I have this shape here. It has a lot of anchor points, so I might hit B and Alt and smooth things down so that we don't have so many anchor points. It's not such a high density file because all those anchor points, not only do they kind of look messy when you select them, but it makes your file a, a bigger file size. So I might smooth things off like that. Um, but that's, that's something that I do a lot, especially when I'm creating stamps for my freelance clients is offset path to make things a little bit bigger or a little bit smaller um, besides just scaling. So that is another one of my favorite shortcuts. My final favorite shortcut of the day is something that we use all the time as surface designers. I'm going to cut this little butterfly in half. If I wanted this butterfly to be perfectly symmetrical, one thing I can go to is object, transform, reflect. Now I have made this a shortcut because I am a surface designer and I use reflect all the time. So doing this, um, I can see that that antenna is going to be obviously a problem. So I'm going to erase this here. I'm going to take my blob brush by doing shift B. I'm going to do something a little farther away and I'm going to make this a little rounded. Now I'm going to select this control R alt R copy let's see what we got here I like that the only thing I might do is tip it just a little bit so that this lines up a little bit better oops so now I'm going to select this again control R alt R copy and then pull that together and I have a perfectly symmetrical butterfly which with my Pathfinder over here, I'm going to merge together so that it is a single beautiful butterfly. So those are my favorite shortcuts. Smoothing with the brush, copying and pasting directly on front, using that anchor point tool to make things sharp corners, outlining strokes, offsetting paths, and using the reflect tool. I hope this has been helpful for you as you create your surface designs and illustrations in Adobe Illustrator. Want to learn more about Adobe Illustrator from me? I've got tons of resources for you. Head to the link in the description of this video to see my Skillshare courses. I have three Skillshare courses all relating to Adobe Illustrator and speeding up your process and head to my elizabethsilver.com slash subscribe to get access to my Surface Pattern Boss Toolkit. If you're already a subscriber, you can log in with your password and you'll find under there the Surface Pattern Accelerator course. This is an awesome course that has five daily lessons giving you some of my most valuable tricks in Adobe Illustrator. So be sure to check out the description for links to both of these resources. They are super valuable and will help you speed up your process.